Wow, part seven was 20 minutes long. And we're about halfway there. Holy crap, milestone. Xbox Live achievement. So let's just get going here with part number eight, and let's continue onward. Uh, Blue is my creed. Congratulations on new milestone. So I was wondering, for the sake of comedy, at least would you ever consider making a video on Nickelback? Yes and no. I mean, I kind of want to because it would just, it would really be funny, but it's kind of a dead horse that's been beaten, to, you know, just like crazy over the past three or four years. So I really don't know if it would be all of that funny to a lot of people. I really think that this would be, instead of it being a few years ago and whenever the joke was fresh and everybody was kind of on board, you see memes everywhere, I don't think that would be the same reaction these days. It would almost just seem like desecrating a dead horse. Plain and simple. Uh, Z-E-Q-E-X-E-S. Zequexes. What is your least favorite Dream Theater album? Strangely enough, probably their first one, When Day and Dream Unite. I like some of the stuff that's on it, uh, but I don't, I'm not as familiar with it, so maybe that's one of the main reasons why. Some of their stuff in the 2000s kind of was going on a trend downward. Um, and actually, I find Dream Theater to be one of the reasons why uh, heavy metal actually was not as bad as people thought in the 1990s because they were really rising up and they were really making an impact, though it was one that was only felt in choice communities of metal fans. Uh, and a lot of times with the different scenes that were arising and the different scenes that were very famous and popular, Dream Theater was kind of the odd man out. So and there was definitely a lot to build on there, but what they were doing was is that they were getting a lot more people interested in playing the guitar, they were getting a lot more people interested in progressive music, and the revolution has definitely begun. Uh, let's see, what are your thoughts on the band Autopsy? Asks Mysterious Pink Fluff. I like the guys. I did a review on their latest album a couple of years back, and it was definitely a gore fest. It was a lot of fun. Uh, what are your thoughts on Sun? For me, it's something I can't really just sit there and listen to an album, but I fucking loved it live. Such an experience. Ryan JVH. It is kind of like a, like a strange spiritual conundrum, uh, Sun is. They're a fantastic uh, live band from what I have been able to tell from you, uh, from your uh, report there, but also from Anthony, the Needle Drop. Uh, love that guy. Definitely sub to him. Uh, he got to see them, and he was just absolutely... I, I love the reaction. I love the reaction, but uh, for me, it is difficult to listen to a full Sun album. It really is, to just sit down and listen to it with nothing else going on. You almost have to have your mind in an altered state in order to really appreciate it fully, unless you are a fan of droning. And these guys, they take the word droning, and they just, they bastardize it, they defile it, they commit horrible atrocities on it, and yet it still sounds good. You almost wish that you could Alvin and the Chipmunks' son and see what the hell it would sound like. I may have to Google that. Uh, Primed, or Prime Despots. Rushes off a mention with Within Metal Disclo uh, Discourse, despite not being generally considered a metal band in a strict sense. What are your thoughts on Rush's contribution to metal? Also, I know it would take about 20 videos, but how about a Rush discography review? It would take 19, because I did the new one, so I don't have to do that one, but... Um, I thought about that also, just in case they win Music Madness. Uh, Music Madness is a great tool uh, to determine who's going to get the discography reviews. And, uh, you know, I, I really like Rush's contributions to metal because, you know, they came from an age where uh, progressive music was kind of getting some legs. You know, you had bands such as Kansas and uh, Genesis during the same time whenever Rush was first getting, you know, really big. And then they kind of took that, you know, semi-commercial turn, whatever you want to call it. Um, but they just continue to keep on trucking. They're now in like their fourth or fifth decade. So they've been doing this for a long time. And they are just an extremely efficient machine. They are a great band. And I think a lot of modern metal bands would cite them as an influence regardless to whether or not people consider them metal. So in that way, they have a contribution to metal even if you don't consider them metal. Great job with 9000. Totally deserve my question. What's your thought on the band Pathfinder? Which I have not listened to. So, um... And you also want to hear me talk about Nemesis by Stradivarius, which is still on my list. Oh my god. So much to do. But, um, yeah, I haven't heard of Pathfinder yet. I need to listen to a little bit of their stuff. Uh, Mr. Beaner 97 how many more albums do you expect out of Megadeth, and what is your opinion on their evolution? Their evolution seems to be going in an alright direction. I mean, they had the rise, they had the fall, and then kind of the rebirth. But um, this new album is really going to mean... It's going to be the big one. You know, it's going to be the one that's really going to determine... I think what it's going to be like. I'm not sure how many albums they have left in their tank. I think that they could probably do another five. Um, but 
Super Collider has a lot, it's going to have a lot of bearing on where this band is going, considering Dave has kind of done a 180 in the past couple of years. Um, he's always been over-opinionated, but this time he's kind of gone a little far, so you never know. On the Roadcast asks, how do you feel about the other theatrical metal artists out there? Mushroom Head, etc. Meh. I mean, I've listened to some Mushroom Head. It's not bad, but I can't attach myself to it, you know? And that's the thing. Sometimes whenever you listen to stuff, just, you know, casually, you can sometimes pick something up and become a uh, attached to it. Didn't happen with that band for me, so yeah. Uh, what, do you th what do you think are some of the best heavy metal hard rock movie soundtracks? Asks Metal Dragon, and favorite heavy metal themed film? Uh, don't forget about, you know, films such as Heavy Metal and Heavy Metal 2000, but, um, you know, the Spinal Tap uh, movie is still one of my favorites. It's a mockumentary. It's done in just this comedic style. You know, some people will cite The Pick of Destiny, and it's not bad, but, you know, Spinal Tap is the originator, one of the originators of that whole mockumentary idea, and it was just a lot of fun. So, I mean, that's all it really is. Um, Satyricon... Metal ERO. I got two quick questions. What is your opinion on Metallica releasing a new album this year? <laughs> Good for me. And what is your opinion on the band Gamma Ray? I'm a big fan of them. They're not a bad band. Uh, I, I really like some of their material. Uh, I believe it was No World Order that my friend Rob and I just absolutely adored. We listened to it all the time. Damn the Machine was like a song that we played every time we hung out. It was really funny. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Seven Ham uh, apparently thinks he's going to music madness me. Uh, Devin Townsend versus Eson. Uh, yikes! <coughs> no comment. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'll probably go with uh, with Eson because I really like Devin. Don't get me wrong. I really think his contributions are just epic in scale. But uh, I think that Eson has just he's got a tremendous discography behind him uh, from multiple different bands, multiple different projects, and he's in the studio again. He's working hard. Devin works hard too. Don't get me wrong. So basically, it's like 50 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Fuck, fine, why not? <coughs> Within Temptation 73, congratulations, Cover Killer Nation. Who, in your opinion, is the absolute most creative person in metal? I have no idea. That is a really good question, and I am not prepared for that whatsoever. <coughs> but I might go with one of the people that we just mentioned, Devin Townsend. He is very creative, considering whenever you listen to his uh, discography, he has gone every which direction and has somehow made it relevant, or at least sound relevant. Consider an album such as Ghost, then Deconstruction, then Addicted, considering Strapping Young Lad, Dev Lab. I mean, he's got a lot of creativity within him. That man is a mad scientist and also the evil genius of the Devin Townsend Band. Uh, fantastic achievement. Thank you to Hamish Adams. Uh, what do you do? You're listening. How many times do you listen to an album before reviewing it? I like to review after a couple of playthroughs. Uh, I don't have a set number. And where do I do my listening is usually right where you see me. I, I like to keep things organic. Uh, bleed to Death. One, who's your top three favorite hair bands? Uh, probably Skid Row, Motley Crue, and I'm going to be funny and say Winger. Heading for a heartbreak, baby. I don't know. Maybe some Warrant. Great White. Great White did a great uh, cover of um, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You, which was... Zeppelin cover another band, but you know, another, uh, you know, the song of the same name by somebody else, but they did a great version of that. Uh, Lead to Death number one, Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers? I don't know. Probably Michael Myers. Asking Alexandria Black Veil Brides, just kidding. Real question, do you have steam? No, I do not, Quinn Sable. And I should kill you. <coughs> Dylan Desrolaires has five different, or three different questions, rather. Top five black metal bands, I'd have to do a video. Top five death metal vocalists, i have to do a video. Will you ever review DRI? IDK. Let's go all the way up to Matthew Adlard. Favorite Tool, Porcupine Tree, and Mars Volta album. Tool, probably Enema. Porcupine Tree is either Fear of a Blank Planet or uh, The Sky Moves Sideways. Mars Volta. Mars Volta. The Laust in the Comatorium. I'll go extremely generic, but I really love it. Uh, there's one that's been flagged as spam. Why is it spam? Why are you spam? Wicked Breath 7? Uh, let's see. Pledging for money that need to make an album. I like the idea. Model of the Well did it the best. Your favorite Deftones song or album. Oh, man. Uh, Around the Fur is really good. The Koi no Yokan was fantastic. So, yeah. Uh, 
Not really spam, but okie dokie. Uh, what are your three favorite Iced Earth singers? It really has been that many. I mean, I'm just going to say my favorite of them all is probably either uh, Barlow or um, Ripper Owens. I really like those two. I like the era there. Do you like Twisted Sister uh, Munchen223? I feel like I've known you forever. For some strange reason. Um, they're all right. I listen to some of their old stuff. I love their version of Burn in Hell, which was covered by Tim Report here. Oh my god, I have a question from James Bond. My question, the Beatles or the Rolling Stones? Go. Fuck. My head just exploded. I like them both, so I, I really couldn't choose between one or the other. Uh, the Beatles, probably the latter era is my more... I, I like that the most. But the Rolling Stones have some great materials. Uh, some great material also, but I'm going to throw a wrench in there and say... The Doors. Uh, CB Punk Heavy Metal 665. What are your favorite albums, artists outside the metal and rock genres? I've answered that so many times. Uh, I love a lot of alternative. I love a lot of uh, indie rock. I like a little bit of rap. Uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, some jazz, some blues. Joe Bonamassa, Joe Bonamassa, Joe Bonamassa. <coughs> uh, free, uh, F R E I S. AAT, 1918, what in your opinion is the most innovative and flourishing type of metal these days? Either progressive metal or probably, um, you know, there seems to be a lot of progressive death out there, you know, there's a lot of progressive metal to me always just seems like it's doing very well because it's being infused in so many different places. Um, but I really like bands that are kind of just exploring different sounds and they're doing it within their own work. It's the reason why a lot of people either love or hate Between the Buried and Me, because it sounds so schizophrenic. But I love that because it always makes an album interesting, uh, because it always sounds fresh. Do you like Led Zeppelin? Hesky Time, 1997. Yes. Ronnie Schnock, how come you never review a Black Tide or Offspring album? I did review a Black Tide album on the Cover Killer channel. It was so terrible, I vowed to never do so again. How come I didn't ever talk about Mayhem Fest 2012? I didn't go. Uh, best tunes by the Beatles, Bob Dylan, and the Rolling Stones. I don't know. Patrick Fairfax, there's a lot. And then once again, I will say The Doors. Uh, let's see, Patrick Fairfax, are you a fan of Death Grips? Numerous works this year, metal style, experimental hip-hop. I actually have not listened to it, even though it is a 10 out of 10 uh, from the Needle Drop. And I'm starting to lose my voice, guys, so I'm going to do these next few kind of quickly. Uh, do you prefer David Vincent era, Steve Tucker era, Morbid Angel, probably... Uh, David Vincent. What are your opinions on Avenged Sevenfold? I, uh, Sakai. Sakai. Great live band. It's been played to death for me as far as the studio stuff, so overall, meh. Do you mind, in, well, do you mind about the album cover art? Uh, what do you like? My favorites are QR by Quiet Riot, <coughs> Bottom Deep by Communic, uh, Transcendence by Crimson Glory, cover art, Italian progressive rock, such as Burn America by PMF, uh, P or, yeah, I said it right, or Opus Magnum by Opus Aventi are also very cool. Um, I love cover art. I think cover art's really cool. Uh, Communic has always had some great cover art. You're going to see a lot of great cover art because artists are just constantly getting new and better ideas. So this is always a part about metal that I've never been great about talking about because I'm not an artist. I can't draw. So, of course, I'm going to be impressed. You know what I mean? Um, Death is Fun Kids, who are... Some of your favorite comedy parody artists, such as Weird Al, there's one of them, Tenacious D, eh, they're all right. Death Clock, definitely. Uh, Psycho Stick is pretty damn funny, too. Uh, I love comedy, I love comedians. Uh, Mitch Hedberg, Lewis Black, George Carlin, just to name a few. Hey, so again, you mentioned in a couple of your videos you used to be depressed and suicidal. What was the cause of your depression? And Oh, uh, well. GLOCA17, this will be the last question for this part. Um, combination of things, to be perfectly honest. Um, over the course of numerous years, I was involved in various relationships that eventually uh, all kind of ended in very rapid and unexplained, for unexplained reasons. Uh, I was not exactly too stable to begin with. Uh, it takes a lot for me to be well-spoken and well-versed and not kind of flip, you know, so I was kind of a, a kinder person, but also a more quieter person back then as, as well. There's a lot of brooding um, a lot of things I think I took a little bit too seriously. I experienced some deaths in the family that I never really got the opportunity to, to mourn. And overall, it had just been, it had been trying day to day. You know, being strung along 
and kind of just taking it. And then eventually, I had a couple of events, and I was medicated whenever these events took place, which didn't help. Uh, and by medicated, I mean with antidepressants, which caused a terrible reaction, and which actually caused a uh, event where I did almost lose my life. Um, I took the amount that was prescribed for me, the maximum amount that was prescribed for me. It was prescribed for me, mind you. This was not an overdose. However, I, um, I found myself, you know, in my uh, old studio, kind of just chilling out. And I remember distinctly, I don't even remember falling asleep, but whenever I woke up, I was in the hospital, and I apparently had taken a lot of other drugs. And we're talking like prescription drugs, um, you know, narcotics and different things such as that uh, variety, like a cocktail of them. So yeah, it happened without me really wanting it to. And that just sort of added to things, and things just didn't seem to get much better. So yeah, it was very rough. It was a very rough experience, and my voice is very rough. It's like nails on chalkboards. So I hope that that explains it. Um, and it, there you go. Um, this is the end of this part. Kind of ended on a somber note, but it's alright. I'll talk to you guys next time.